I actually I'm scared I'm gonna be terrible at this. I haven't done this in so long, so like wish me luck because I, I, I I'm scared it's not gonna go well. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good. Today we're gonna be doing super specific book recommendations. So I got you guys to send in on Instagram some super specific book recs that you want answered. And I'm gonna try my best to answer them, but like I don't know how well I'm gonna do. I don't actually love myself this much. I just act like I do. I have not looked at the stuff you guys have sent in, so I'm going in completely blind, but I'm hoping I'm gonna do well. <laughs> but before we get into the video, I actually wanna take a moment to thank the sponsor for today's video, which is Boxu. So Boxu is a premium Japanese snack subscription service. You get one box full of Japanese snacks a month. I've had this before and like, trust me, a, you get so many snacks, and B, they're so tasty. They're so good. So I'm so excited to see what's in this box. So when you first join, you get the Seasons of Japan box, which everyone gets when they first join. And then after that, the boxes are themed every month. So I'm very excited to see what the theme is gonna be this month. Oh, <laughs> oh Kansai Autumn. Oh, oh my God, look at all this stuff. <laughs> Just to give you a peek, there is so much stuff in this box. Something I love about Boxu is that the first like page is a culture guide where it shows you where all the different snacks came from in Japan. And they work with like local chefs, local family run businesses to produce these snacks, which I absolutely love. I think, you know, it's great that this comes from Japan, uh, works with local businesses and supporting local businesses. So let's, let's try something from the box. Ah! I have just seen these heart-shaped lemon mini pies. I would like to see it. Ah. Okay. Oh my god, it smells so much like lemon straight away. They're these little, like, pastries. I love a bit of pastry, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, it's got, like, sugar around the side. Look at the little heart! Little heart! Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. Sorry, this is incredible. Oh my god, I'm having an out of body experience. Oh my god, they were so good. That was like, oh my god, I'm, ha I'm having to like not eat them all now and eat some of them after I film the video. So yeah, I'm so excited to try more of the stuff from this box. We've got Kyoto Matcha Waffle Sandwich, which looks really good. We've got Milk Manju, which looks yummy. So yeah, I would really recommend you go and check Boxu out. You can use the code MEGWITHBOOKS10 for 10% off your own Japanese snack box subscription. I'll leave the link down below that you need to use as well. And I'm very much looking forward to trying all of the other snacks in here. Okay, so let's Let's go over to Instagram. I'm gonna open it up for the first time and I think I'm gonna scroll to the bottom. Oh my God, how do I answer any of these? Okay, a book that made you think this is too much in a good way. Oh, easy. I'm a genius. <laughs> I'm a fucking genius, like. Catherine House, I've spoken about it recently because this is one of the lowest rated books I've ever read. It's the second lowest rated book I've ever read, which honestly is a travesty. This book is fucking bonkers. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> it is too much. Like you feel claustrophobic, you feel anxious. I've never felt so on edge reading a book before, but it was in a good way. Like it was a five star book for me. I absolutely loved it. It's set at this school called Catherine House, which is culty, let's be honest with ourselves here. And it's just crazy. It's a crazy book. Listen, I loved it. It is too much, but in the very best way. A fantasy book with the found family trope. Oh, okay. I just read this. It is Across the Green Grass Fields by Shauna Maguire. Short novella. We love to see it. Well, guess what, people? I get excited about small things. So this is technically the sixth in the Wayward Children series, but this is one of the first ones that you can read first. So you don't have to have read the rest of the Wayward Children series to have read it. You can start with this. And I would actually recommend 
maybe you do. So this whole series, I'm sure you know, is about children who go to these doors and find these worlds that are perfect for them. And Reagan is kind of um, struggling in her normal life with things that she's learning about herself. She goes to this door and goes into this world of horses. She loves horses in our world. And this world is full, filled with centaurs, unicorns, kelpies, all these different kinds of horses essentially and in the book this family take her in and it is just the best like found family adoptive kind of family uh story i've ever read i, I really loved it so much I, that was my favorite aspect of the book how they protected her and raised her and looked after her i mean i suppose it's a little bit different because found family often refers to like friends and stuff that aren't related and this is kind of like an established familial group in a way that she walks into but it's the way that they interact and, and build around her it just ah, fills my heart with warmth. <laughs> oh, he fills my heart with warmth. I'd really recommend you read this if you haven't already and just start the Wayward Children series if you haven't already. It's like the best, most whimsical, wonderful fantasy out there. An underhyped thriller that is actually a thriller and keeps you on the edge of your seat. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Oh my God, I'm so bad at this. Well, what is underhyped? That is my question to you. If I had to give you recommendations for the most thrillery, on edge, like keeps me on the edge of my seat, you know, kept me reading, it would be No Exit by Taylor Adams and They Never Learned by Lane Fargo. But I don't know if either of these are technically, well, I don't think this is underhyped. This is very popular, but I haven't heard that many people speak about this. A few more have been speaking about it like in the past couple months. This was amazing. This was so good. I don't know if it would class as underhyped, but we're just gonna go with it because these two are the most like suspenseful, like I could not stop reading the book books I've ever read. This one more made me feel sick. Never has a book made me feel like, like I'm gonna die. Like made my heart pound so much, made me feel so worried. This is disgusting. I like it though. I'm sure you know what this one's about because it's not underhyped, but it's about this uh, girl who gets stuck at a service station and very quickly finds out that someone there is keeping this young child locked in the back of the van. And it is this story of trying to escape and outwit that person. This one is about a teacher, a professor at a university who has been killing shitty men for the past couple, well, for a long, long time. She's a, a serial killer, but she kills men who are like rapists or abusers. She's a feminist icon. And now someone is kind of like onto her case. People are starting to piece together these suicides or suspicious deaths. Oh my God, the twist in this, it's so good. This is the fastest I've ever read a book. If I could read this right now, the book I'm reading right now is a bit slower. And I'm like, I need this book in my life. <laughs> One that I saw earlier and thought I couldn't answer is cozy Christmas slash winter non-scary thriller books. Thank you, Hannah. <laughs> And I didn't think, I hadn't really read anything like that, but one that's on my TBR and that you may enjoy is Midwinter Murder by Agatha Christie. So this is 12 different short stories of like, you know, murder mysteries, but they're quite cozy. I feel like Agatha Christie ones, they're not like gore. They're like cozy, mysterious, detective um, mysteries. So this may be a good recommendation for you. I haven't read it myself, so I can't attest to how good it is, but I'm hoping to read this in December this year as well. Like maybe over Christmas, maybe this will be like my Christmas read. Oh my God, how exciting. So I can't recommend one I've read, but this one seems like a good bet. Horror recommendation for someone who is a scaredy cat but would like to try the genre. Mm, I know a lot of things, but I don't know about that. I'm not sure why. Uh, we'll go like with something that's horror adjacent. So like, it's kind of horror or like YA horror. I would say Wilder Girls by Rory Power. This is about this um, girls school kind of set on this isolated island where the teachers started dying one by one and the girls all started kind of, their bodies started changing in different ways. It's really, really good. There's, this is definitely like soft horror, I would say. It's a fucking weird book. But I really, really loved this. It was such a fascinating book. There's sections told where this, one of the girls, because there's like three girls in this book who are very close friends and have this very tight-knit friendship group. And there's sections where one of the girls is kind of 
not entirely like with it and that was like one of my favorite sections how it was told it is scary but it's not too scary i think this is a good way if you've never read horror before to kind of dip your toe in a little a little dip of the toe a little dip of the toe <laughs> someone said something sapphic and spooky and i think that fits as well i would say that's sapphic and spooky so that's a recommendation for that as well favorite short weird books how short are we talking? Because I would say What Drove Me by Nina LaCour is a new favourite this year. This is pretty short. It's like 250 pages. This is about this girl who um, joins this farm. She's just aged out of the foster care system. So joins this farm with these other foster kids and she's kind of teaching them and starts to see ghosts around the farm. And you're like, is it real? Is it not? It's getting weird. The way that this deals with guilt and sadness and melancholy and wanting to belong and wanting to be good like a theme in this is wanting to be good wanting to be your best and it's heartbreaking and it's, it's just so good i also would have an honorable mention for one i have not spoken about in a while and that is silver in the wood by emily tesh i'm very excited to read the second book in this series i do own it this is super short this is like a hundred and something pages and it's about this man who lives in the heart of the woods tethered to the forest and the hall that the he lives on the grounds of acquires a handsome intensely curious new owner and the way that their lives kind of intersect and they um, get to know each other is very interesting. It's a weird book and I'm very excited to read the second one but it's very yeah it's very strange. <laughs> a mystery set in a small town with a female protagonist. Now my immediate my mind my mind immediately goes to Quiet Life in the Country by T.E. Kinsey. We all know, probably my favourite cosy mystery series. My mind, oh, it amazes me sometimes. It's set in this quaint, small British town. We have a lady and her maid who are this kind of like double act, like think Sherlock and Watson, like that's their relationship. And I love them. They are just so much fun. I love the audiobooks for this. I think I am going to start buying the physical books because I love the series that much. I never really do that. If a book, I can get it on audiobook. I don't usually buy the physical book especially if I've already read them but I think I just want to own the series because I love this series so much but like let me hold off on it a bit but they're, they're quite affordable I think they're only like five pounds but it's just like fun cozy murder mysteries you know like a bit of murder but make it cute but make it fun a more contemporary recommendation I would have because that one is set like in Edwardian England I would recommend The Night Swim by Megan Golding another recent read I feel like I'm recommending a lot of books I've read quite recently because they're what's fresh in the old noggin but this is about a protagonist who visits this very small american town where this very high profile rape trial is happening and um, she's a podcaster and she's covering the trial for her podcast but also a woman is contacting her about her sister's death 20 years ago or something like that where it was ruled as a drowning but she believes that her sister was murdered so it's kind of these two different storylines playing out the audiobook for this is great as well and i loved this it was such a great thriller great courtroom proceedings i found that super interesting not something i've read a lot of before a book as immersive as the night circus hmm I don't know if anything can live up to the Night Circus. Like, Erin Morganston just does some shit with both the Star of the Sea and the Night Circus. I don't know what can live up to it. I mean, I would again recommend the Wayward Children series, Come Tumbling Down, one of the most immersive worlds. And I think Sean McGuire has quite a similar, I mean, people might disagree with me, but her writing makes me feel the same way that Erin Morganston's writing makes me feel. Listen, I just can't shut up about this. Yeah, Something to read when I need a break from grad school readings. Oh! Okay, perfect. Let's go for a fun contemporary. The Black Flamingo. Perfect book to get you through grad school readings because told in verse, you can't see, but it's told in verse. And we're following Michael pretty much from birth um, into being at university, him discovering his gay identity and living at the intersection of being black and gay and how that you know disadvantages him in society and it's literally the most beautiful way of words i've ever read you'll just fly through it you'll read it in like an hour it will bring tears to your eyes how gorgeous the writing is have some fun you will not get one tear out of me tonight amazing Dean Atter's writing is. I can't wait to read more of his stuff in the future. Next one is Dark Academia that isn't secret history. If we were villains, they never learn. Bonus if fantasy. I mean, my, you've probably read this if that's what you're interested in, but Ninth House by Lee Bardugo is the moment. She is an icon, she is a legend, and she is the moment. She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. Yeah. Now, come on now. We are still waiting on book number two. We've been waiting forever 
forever. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this is set at Yale and is a murder mystery and it is fantastical. It's amazing. Listen, we all know I love this book. But when are you going to give us book two, Miss Lee Go? I need a title. I need a release date and a title so I can like collect myself because at the moment you're making me wait too long. Alex Stern, an amazing main character. I mean, if that is what you're interested in, you're probably looking for a more niche recommendation, but that's what I'm giving you. A book with a POV of a serial killer. We've touched on it already. They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. Serial killer, but a serial killer you root for. You're like, come on sis, let's kill these men. Man. Atmospheric and haunting, preferably by the sea. The perfect one for this is Summer of Salt. Oh, excuse me, my hair. Now I didn't love this book. It was a little bit disappointing for me, but it is exactly what you just mentioned. Atmospheric haunting by the sea. It's a story of these two sisters who have magic in their family. And one of this one of the twins hasn't got her magic yet. It's this island where strange things happen. Uh, there's all this like magic and it's very very atmospheric and it is haunting because it deals with some really difficult topics the kind of girl's life is overturned um, I'd say maybe at like the 100 page mark and from then on it kind of gets more dark and haunting and, and atmospheric and I'm just using the words you gave me over and over again in a different order it is everything you just said so there you go. Oh, next one is big move slash change in main character's life, wholesome feels and good friendships. I have the book for you. Loveless by Alice Oseman. So in this, our main character has just gone to university. So a massive change in anyone's life, going away to university. And she's learning about terms such as asexual, aromantic, and kind of figuring out that they can apply to her. All of Alice Oseman's books are wholesome, exhibit B, you can't see them, heart stopper. So yeah, this feels very wholesome and uh, like a very safe space as a book and very um, welcoming. And there's really great friendships in this. Alex Oseman does friendships super, super well. So I really loved the friendships in this book. I thought they were just so lovely and uh, nuanced and the friendships went through like peaks and troughs throughout the book. And this book is really about the friendships. So if you haven't read this yet, this is like the best recommendation for you. A story and verse you recommend that's not Elizabeth Acevedo or Dean Atta. My number one recommendation would just be one that I've just read actually. I haven't spoken about it yet. Is, um, oh my god, why do I forget the, forget the name? Other Words for Home? Ah, oh, this was a five star for me. It's an amazing book. I did listen to the audiobook. I think audiobook or physical book would be a great way to read it. It's a middle grade about this girl moving to the USA from Syria. Her brother and father have stayed behind in Syria and it's her and her mum and it's her, I guess, learning to have other places as home you know and learning to find a home in the US and learning about herself and going through this really difficult thing but it's just beautifully told it made me want to cry I loved this book so so much I at the first like the first couple like 20 minutes of listening to the audiobook I was like okay this is just gonna be like a three star but then I just got completely taken in by the story and the main character and just fell in love I just I absolutely fell in love. So there we have it. That is all of my super specific book recommendations. I couldn't answer all of them that you sent in. A, because of, we would have been here for like three hours. You guys sent so many in. And B, some of them I just couldn't do. Like, <laughs> some of you, yeah, some of you were so specific, I just couldn't do. But I hope I did a good job and some of these are books you would like to read. Let me know if you had any answers for any of the questions down below that you think I would like. If you've gone to the end of this video, comment the purple heart emoji for Loveless, because there's hearts on the cover and it's purple. What can I say, I'm a genius. Um, thank you again to my patrons for making all of my work at the moment possible. I love you guys. I love all of you watching this. Um, I hope you have a good rest of your week and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.